All right, welcome everyone to Satoshi Chats, episode 15. My name is Jack. And my name is Casey. Well, BTC price, 46,190. Um, all time high is still uh, 58. So this is a dip. This is the definition of a dip. Yeah, it doesn't get a doesn't get better than this for uh, buying opportunities. I mean, when when you've got Giga Chad Sailor over here buying at fifty two, as we'll discuss. I mean, everything under under that is just a steal, right. a bargain. It's um, it's almost like this is the literal definition of a dip in a bull market. Yet um, people still are fear. Uh, there's fear in, in the market for uh, retail when uh, in reality um, when you sell your Bitcoin you're selling them to Michael Saylor so yeah um, I mean just just a few months ago we were below 30 right, right. so it's like how can you be how can you complain can you be bearish right now you know <laughs> how can you complain about the price really um, right so uh, I was uh, listening to uh, uh, Saifedean Amos uh, Michael Saylor podcast and um, he had a uh, seminar afterwards with um, with uh, his students just uh, discussing the podcast with Michael Saylor um, and one uh, interesting thing I heard was um, uh, about the stock to flow model and about how um, institutional invent investors uh, institutional investors uh, render it uh, useless because of uh, their amount of uh, say in the market I guess you could say um, just that monetary power that they yeah, that they wield you that know they wield yeah and their um, their ability to hodl really right. at the end of the day um, someone was mentioning how uh, in in the long term uh, institutions will make Bitcoin less volatile obviously because of the the diamond hands at play because mm. they're institutions and um, right yeah like I think institutions just have such a higher ability to to hold I mean they're not susceptible to economic downturns like households are so if you lose your job you might have to sell your bitcoin if you have nothing else right and you have a family to take care of and a house and everything but uh you know michael saylor's family is you know they're well taken well. care of yeah, yeah. They're, they're taken care of i don't even so, think he has a wife so, <laughs> <laughs> so so it they're on a different like playing field as far as like hodling and all that and they're just thinking on a different time scale than these short-term retail traders are especially the the big media futters who talk about small scale dips as if it's the end of the world I mean if you look at the bigger picture we're just going straight up right and um, there was there was a um, there was a point made about how obviously in the long term it will become less volatile because of the the hodling at play but some uh, this is not as uh, I guess you could say uh, important but some of these uh, smaller companies that have Bitcoin on their balance sheet let's say they they set aside 5% of their balance sheet to Bitcoin um, if it were to increase to 10% um, they would have no choice but to sell so in the short term um, this would make it a little bit more volatile because of the amount of dumping the dumping of these coins that these companies are going to do um, but again in the in the long run it's it, it's not going to matter because um, you know one company dumps you know if, if Bitcoin increases to 10% when they only need five when they only want five um, you know they'll 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 dump it the price will go down but Michael Saylor will just pick those right back up so it really doesn't right. matter there are going to be companies with weak hands I mean we're looking at um, we're looking at these hedge funds and these other opportunists who do like to make quick dollars and they do have you know short-term trading plans or whatever um, and that will make things volatile when the big money enters that kind of scene 
um, but I think on any long scale the the bigger bigger fish will always be the people accumulating over time right I mean just just the volatility in and of itself is adding to the network right because volatility is is volume it's tr it's trading and it's like interest right so um, as far as as far as like short-term volatility it's it's only a, uh, a reflection of how much interest is going on and how much money is pouring in so yeah yeah um, yeah just to i keep thinking of michael saylor um definitely the rookie of the year in uh, 2020 2021 yeah um it's amazing how someone who wasn't involved in bitcoin at all two years ago is suddenly the the face of bitcoin uh it's quite interesting and, and i proudly you know choose him as the face of bitcoin or as, right. at least my face of bitcoin because he really eloquently expresses um the hodler mindset you know he's not he is absolutely not like a shitcoiner and he's absolutely right. not like a non-hodler he has diamond hands and like it's uh it's insane how he just went from zero to 100 so quick on on the bitcoin cheerleading front and like yeah I, I just front, <laughs> I like that. yeah and i just don't think there's a better public face to have not because like of any particular reason other than he's like really um he really aggressively pursues what he believes is right you know and you can tell by his thinking that um he strongly believes in his thesis that bitcoin is right and uh he he describes it and expresses it in a really nice way i think yeah do you want to talk about yeah so uh so my recent reading was uh, bitcoin is venice by alan farrington it's a fantastic piece of writing uh, i recommend everyone to go read it maybe i'll link it in the in the description of his twitter i don't even know probably at alan f32 i feel like something like that uh but anyways I'll, maybe I'll link that too. Anyways, uh, so what it's about, the, the main thesis, you know, is that Bitcoin is essentially a, a capitalist haven in an increasingly feudal work environment. That's kind of what I took out of it, right? So what I mean by that, and what I think Alan meant by that, basically, is um, we live in a world where work is compelled, and oftentimes people don't even choose the paths that they want to choose because of that. And I think... Um, it was all about freedom this entire piece and it had very good thesis about um about why this is true um it compared it to various ideas especially in the greek world um logos and all these other things and um it was a fantastic piece and i i really think it it hit the the hammer home with how um if bitcoin frees people right it's just like venice which he describes uh Venice was a very like free and open society which kind of fostered trade and harbored new ideas and not necessarily um, it didn't come out with products or like new things what it would do is it allowed certain things to flourish so much that they would almost take on a life of their own and they would almost become their own systems and when you do that it creates such a magnificent like trade and self-secured um, system that really nothing can stop it and that's what they found with venice um and bitcoin really exhibits a lot of those properties in that it motivates people to keep itself secure and it motivates people to keep itself free because it is freeing in and of itself and so i think uh i think it was a fantastic piece uh so yeah. it's like it's free market pretty much yeah yeah it was a it was a it's a writing on the free market um and it was explaining how the fundamental ideas behind bitcoin regardless of the execution because they were original to bitcoin bitcoin is the answer right and um he, he even makes the point like um if if a lot of people talk about like things that are wrong with bitcoin but if you wanted to fix it go ahead yeah but go right ahead. but it, it it doesn't work because bitcoin works bitcoin and, does um, work that's it that makes me think of something i was listening to uh I believe it was the Safe Dean podcast, the Bitcoin Standard podcast, and um, it was talking about how um, patents nowadays, um, they really, uh, 
like nowadays with uh, with with patents, it really limits um, innovation in our society because of um, it. It doesn't allow people to to create the things that they want to and the, and the, and the produce it and sell it. So it. Um, have you heard of that? The patent. You know, I I haven't heard of that, but I've always I have thought of that before, and um, I license all my work, all my writing under creative commons which means everyone's free to use it and transcribe it as they wish and bitcoin is open source and a lot of the things i like are open source and i i really believe in that and um yeah i just i don't necessarily agree with um having a legal patent in order to create something when someone could create it a little better possibly and then and maybe uh innovate it a little bit better but they're restricted by it because if they do they'll go to jail so yeah and look it's bitcoin is so fantastic that it doesn't even need to limit other cryptos and prevent other cryptos from happening they're it's so good happening. that they happen and they're just not as good as bitcoin they just be, yeah right it's 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 so secure in itself that it doesn't need to limit others uh in their own you know way of whatever they want to do so i think that's like yeah it's it's all fundamental yeah. to bitcoin right yeah very interesting so, in case you missed it last time, we announced that we're going to uh, Bitcoin Conference 2021 located in Miami. It's going to be in June as far as it's planned right now. Um, pretty excited to be there. We'd be uh, happy to meet any of you guys there. Yeah. Um, any young folk that want to discuss Bitcoin? Yeah, no oldies. No oldies. <laughs> 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 Anyways, um, I think that wraps it up for this episode. Uh, give us a like and comment and subscribe if you liked it. And uh, yeah, see, you we'll later. see you in the next one. Peace out.